Hey there, I hope you're having a wonderful day. In this video, we're going to talk about while loops in C++. So in the previous videos, you learned about for loops in C++, and basically for loops are used to repeat a specific block of code a certain number of times. So here I have a for loop, and with a for loop, you need to specify three things, a starting number, a stopping condition, and the number of steps. So with this for loop, I start at zero and I stop at the length or size of the vector, and I increment the value by one each time. So within here, I'm repeating the code for printing out i for the index and the value at that index. So if I save and run our program, you can see we have a list of cities. So we have the index, colon, and the city name. So this is a for loop, and we can also do the same with a while loop. So a while loop is similar to a for loop in that you're repeating a block of code over and over again. However, the difference is with a for loop, you specify a number of times. So in this case, we have pretty much a counter, whereas a while loop, it's more focused on repeating the block of code until a condition is met. So a while loop is somewhat similar to a conditional statement in that you need a condition. However, it's a loop, so it repeats a block of code. So in this video, I'm going to show you two examples where we use while loops to iterate through a vector. So for the first example, we are just going to iterate through the vector and print out the values similar to how we do so with the for loop. So unlike with a for loop, we need to specify a counter outside the block. So I would do size ti and set it to zero. And then afterwards, I will create a while loop, so while. And then within the parentheses, I need to specify the condition. So in this case, the condition is very clear, and that is while i is less than cities.size. And then within here, I will repeat the code block. So I'm just going to take this and copy and paste it here. So now if I save and run my program, let's see what happens. And you can see we have this value, zero, colon, New York, being printed over and over again. So in this case, we have something called an infinite loop. So if you ever get yourself in this situation, just press Control C, and this will terminate the program. So the reason why we had an infinite loop just now is because this condition always returned true. And the reason is we have i equals zero, and we just print this over and over again, we never change the value of i. So here, what we need to do is i plus equal one, and then let's save and run our program. And as you can see, we have the for loop and while loop printing the same values. And you actually don't need to do plus equal one. You can do i plus plus, just like how you use uh, the post increment in the for loop, you can do it here as well. So let's save and run a program. And you can see we get the same values. And you can also do plus plus i. So if I save and run a program, you can see we get the same values. Now you might be wondering why I can declare i twice, because I declared i over here, and then I'm doing it again here, and that is because of scope. So within this for loop, this i is only accessible within the local scope of this for loop. Whereas this variable i, since it is declared outside of this while loop, it can be accessed by the while loop. So if I were to just remove the declaration, you can see i is undefined here, okay? So this i in the for loop can only be accessed by the code within the for loop. For that reason, we can declare i outside of this block, okay? And another thing you might be wondering is, can we use the post increment and pre increment and place it over here within this while loop? So I'm going to comment this out. And if I do pre increment over here, let's see what happens. So if I save and run the program, you can see we get five for the for loop, and we only get four for the while loop. And that is with the pre increment. And the reason is, when we do this condition, we have an order of operations. So this pre-increment changes i first, and then does the comparison. So then we get one, and then it checks, is one less than the size? And then we get two, 
and then 3, and then 4, and then 5. Now what happens if I do the opposite? So instead of pre-increment, I do post-increment. So basically, I do the check first, and then I increment i. So let's see what happens. And then you can see we get this undefined behavior. So what is happening? So let's scroll up. And as you can see, we have the first five values being printed by the for loop. And with our while loop, we are starting at one again. And then after the last element, we are trying to access a value at index five. So what's happening here? So if I scroll over here, you can see we have index zero, one, two, three, four. So with post increment, you are doing the comparison first and then incrementing i by one. Whereas pre-increment, you are incrementing i first and then doing the comparison. Now the problem with post increment here is you are still going to start at one instead of zero because it increments the value after it checks the comparison. So if you have index four, it's going to do, yep, four is less than five and then increment it. So after that final check, you'll have i equals five, which is why this gets printed. And since there's no value at index five, you get some undefined behavior. And basically you're accessing memory that you shouldn't be allowed to access. So this is called a segmentation fault in C++. So instead of incrementing i in the condition, you want to increment i at the very end of your while loop. So I'm just going to leave it here. And usually we do i plus equal one or i plus plus since it might be easier to read. So I'm just going to leave that here. So now if I save and run the program, you can see with the for loop, we get these five cities. And then with the while loop, we also get these five cities. Now the question is, when should I use a while loop versus a for loop? So with a while loop, it depends on the condition. Whereas with a for loop, we have a counter. So a classic example would be if I'm searching for a value in a vector. So first off, let me just comment out this block of code. So let's say I'm searching for a city in the vector. I would do string target city. And let's say I set it to London. And then I would create a Boolean found and I'll set it to false. And within the for loop, I will do a check. So if cities of i is equal to target city, I will set found equal to true. And then down here, I will do if found see out target city found. Else see out target city not found. All right, so now if I save and run the program, you can see I iterate through all the values in the vector and I found the city London. And let's say I change this and I'm looking for a different city. So let's say I put Barcelona and I save and run the program. You can see Barcelona not found. All right, so this is how you can search for a value in a vector using a for loop. So let me move this back to London. And if I run the program, and as you can see, we have one small issue, and that is London is at index one. So ideally, once I find this value, I should stop searching. So I shouldn't be printing the rest of the vector because this would be consuming a lot of memory. So let's say if I had a thousand cities in the vector, and London is at index one, it wouldn't make sense for me to continue searching if I already found it in the vector. So instead of doing it like this, I can come this out and I can use a while loop. So here within the while loop, I can add another condition and that'll be and not found. And then here I can do if cities of i is equal to target city found is equal to true. So as long as i is less than the size of the vector and I haven't found the value I'm looking for, continue repeating this block of code. So if I save and run a program, you can see we have i is zero and we haven't found the value. So we continue to the next iteration, i is one, and we found the value for London and therefore we stop the while loop. 
So with a while loop, you wouldn't have to iterate through all the values in the vector. You can continue iterating until you have your stopping condition. Whereas with a for loop, you would iterate through the vector until you reach the end of the vector. All right, so that's one advantage we have with a while loop over a for loop in that it focuses on the condition. Whereas with a for loop, we focus on the counter. All right, so that's while loop. And actually, one more thing, I'm going to comment this out. And I want to show you how you can replicate this behavior with a for loop. So here within the for loop, we can use something called a break statement. And with a break, we forcefully terminate the loop. So here I can just do break. And basically, if this condition is met, it's going to set found to true and just break out of the loop. So this is similar to the while loop here, except we need the break statement to forcefully exit the for loop. So if I save and run the program, you can see now it only iterates two times, index zero and then index one, we found the value, then we break out. All right, so that's it for this video. Hopefully you understand how to use a while loop and what are the differences between a for loop and a while loop. And if you found this video helpful, make sure you leave a like and subscribe. If you have any questions, let me know down below in the comments and I'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye.